Hi everyone, my name is Ma Hang Li from China, from uh, Shanghai. <coughs> and uh, uh, now I major in coastal engineering and uh, port development. And uh, Danu is my professor. Now here is uh, a place near uh, Rotterdam, Masplak 2. And we, we want to make, make a research about the current this is the third day and uh, it's a little bit cold here <laughs> and uh, but anyway we are enjoying ourselves here and uh, we can learn a lot from Dano from this experiment this is uh, much more than I uh, expected <laughs> I never th uh, thought I can uh, wear this uh, suit uh, I'm excited really I, this is the first time I swim in the ocean, <laughs> um, but uh, I feel good. You can talk about the longshore current, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, make calculations of it, but to actually feel it eh, and to see it and to measure it is, uh, is very important. To, uh, to know what kind of uh, dangerous currents can happen, you first of all have to know what the bottom is like. So uh, you have to do measurements of the, of the bathymetry, as we call it, the depth in the surf zone. Now that is uh, usually quite difficult to do because it's shallow, you have big waves. But these guys at the Delft University have developed this jet ski with, the, with an echo sounder underneath it and a GPS receiver on top of it. So the GPS knows where the jet ski is exactly the echo sounder knows how deep it is underneath the jet ski and with those two data you get X, Y and Z and you can construct the whole bathymetry. So they do that with the jet ski underwater and I think you've seen already the, the little wheelbarrow with the GPS receiver um, that, that walks the dry beach and then these two can be combined, they actually overlap a bit because we do this with high water and we do the other thing with low water. Um, so once you know exactly what the bathymetry is like, then you can compute the currents. Uh, you can, if you know what the, the incoming waves are like, and you can measure those with buoys or you can model them with uh, operational models, you know the wave conditions, you know the tide conditions, and you can use a two-dimensional model to actually predict where the dangerous rip currents will occur. But you see it's a very complex reality and the, even though you measure very accurately you always miss things, the models miss processes so we need to ver verify uh, the performance of these models. We have to validate them against measurements. Now you can put an instrument into the water and measure the velocity at that point but then who says that that's an interesting point? The rip current may be just right next to it. So we have a much more flexible method that is using drifters. Now this was first developed in, in, in America uh, and, and a colleague of ours, Adreniers from Miami, brought it to, uh, to, uh, to Holland and these TU guys developed it further. And so the idea is you have these drifters, where are they? Oh, here are the drifters. Maybe we can go there. So these are drifters. Um, you see they have the very sophisticated water bottles, empty water bottles that are the floating devices. And we have the, uh, uh, the, the GPS receiver is on the top. And in this watertight box is a, a logger, a data logger that logs the, the GPS data from this receiver. What, what we do is we put these things into the water. We note very well what time it is that we, we put in, but of course the logger says that too. And then on a sign we all release the, 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 the drifters and they will go to different places depending on the current. And later on, when we extract the data from these loggers, the loggers give us X and Y uh, and we 
can plot on the map, uh, the map that we made with the help of the echo sounder, we can plot the tracks of the drifters. And we can see, oh, this drifter went outside and that was a rip current. And maybe uh, it, it, it goes back again. And by doing that, you can construct the velocity field and you can do the similar thing in your numerical model. So you get one track from the data or 10 tracks from the data. You put the same tracks in your model. And of course, it, it never is a good match, but every time you learn and you, you improve it. But just apart from improving that model, uh, it also gives us direct information about how fast these currents are. So if you do a lot of these experiments, you gain empirical knowledge that can help uh, the life, uh, save uh, lifeguards and uh, uh, help understand when the dangerous currents So happen. one of the important things you, you learn during such a week of field work is, is to keep track of everything, to make notes of everything. So we always have a couple of reporters uh, uh, students who have one task and is, uh, note everything that happens and uh, whether they're taking uh, doing the, the surveys or, or uh, supervising the, the drifter experiment uh, this is a very important aspect and then as soon as we get back somebody types it into the laptop so we get a good data collection uh, data set and uh, then we work on it to validate it, make plots of it, see if it is worth it. And then by that you get a validated data set that you can actually do something with. We are working on the data from yesterday. We are trying to put them in a model so that we can visualize the, the, the setting of the, of the bathymetry of a beach. Yeah, those lines have been the path made by the jet ski in the sea. And here is the water line. And the brown lines are the paths made by the wheelbarrow. That is the guy on, on the beach just to, to collect uh, data about the topography itself. Yeah. And from this, we, we input it in the model in MATLAB uh, to obtain this graph. But this one will be maybe further refined to get uh, maybe 3D, 3D pictures about uh, the, topo the beach topography, the, the, mm -hmm. the beach layout. We are applying all what we have been learning from the beginning of the, of the studies, from mm -hmm. the module one up to now. And uh, for me personally, and I guess for my friend also, it's a, a, a real opportunity to put into practice what we've been, what we've been learning in theory. And I guess uh, for me it will help uh, a lot uh, in our future career, wherever we will be. And uh, we have a sound, uh, sound knowledge about uh, practical things. Mm -hmm. So we will feel more comfortable you know, in the future to apply uh, for all the theories okay. that we are doing uh, with in, in the course. 